Hi guys, um, I see you're in here, but no video is on. And for some reason I have Sharon's iPad as the main video in the screen. <laughs> so I'm just trying to figure that out. Hello, it's Josh here. Sorry, I had something go off in my ear just when you talked. What was that? Sorry. Uh, hi, it's Josh here. Hi there. How are you? I'm hanging in there. How about you? Good. Get ready I, for I, Halloween? A little bit. Yep. Yep. We. I just saw your invite a few minutes ago, and so I thought I'd pop on and, and learn from you guys. Oh, well, yeah. This is going to be... Um, kind of starting out as a question and answer and trying to see where people want to go with it. And depending on how many people we have, we may just jump straight into Illustrator and talk about stuff. So it's kind of not structured for this mess and for this meeting. <laughs> but I do have a plan. I've been telling people I'm going to get back to this for months now. And I'm going to try and commit to every Wednesday. So if uh, people start having more and more questions, hi, Sharon, I see you now. <laughs> um then uh you know hopefully the content will feed itself as we go and obviously there's going to be seasonal stuff like right now there's um christmas ornaments and things to be done so um we'll wait a few more minutes and see if anybody joins and then otherwise we'll get into it i see you oh i see you for some reason it started a waiting room and i'm not sure why they've changed a bunch of stuff since i used uh zoom last so it looks like bonnie's in and connecting and i know i only saw like five or six people in um, the various uh, groups saying that they're uh, gonna be able to make it. So I did see some people asking whether or not it's gonna be recorded, which it is. Do you, did you get the notice when you came in that it said it was being recorded? I, I did, yes. Okay, good. I don't trust it sometimes because I've had it where I've recorded stuff and it's like, where did it go on my hard drive? I have no clue where it's saving on my hard drive right now, but I'll find it. <laughs> I see Bonnie's in, but no video. Sharon, are you going to chat with us today or just listen? I put her on the spot. <laughs> oh, there's Bonnie. Hi, Bonnie. Hi there. Yeah. Trying to mute my background. <laughs> oh, your background's fine. I think it's better than mine. Mine's a mess right now with all the uh there it looks good. Oh, no worries, Sharon. I'm sorry you're sick. I hope you feel better. I know my mom always said get the Polish uh, chicken soup. They cook it down hard with the bones in it. I was just telling Josh, uh, Bonnie, that this is um, 
you know, the, hopefully going to be the first of multiple uh, sessions that I'm doing on Wednesdays. So uh, we're going to kind of play it by ear on this one and just kind of chat and see where that takes us. Um, I can pull up Illustrator. We can talk about design or choices or anything you guys want. So feel free to chime in. Awesome. I have a long way to go in my designing abilities. I can make cool stuff, but I have to use everybody else's designs. Oh, uh, okay. Well, we'll fix that. We'll get you working on your own on no time at all. It's not hard. It's just kind of a matter of how you think about it. So um, we've already done five minutes in, so why don't we get to it? Um, so we already talked about design. Josh, what is it you were kind of looking to talk about or learn? Oh, goodness. What was I looking to learn? <clears throat> um, or are you just here to snoop? <laughs> I, I, I like learning from everybody. I think everybody has uh, something that, you know, an avenue or angle they, they can share. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't th I don't think I'm ever done learning. But um, yeah, I, so I, I literally saw your, your link a few minutes before the, the broadcast and wanted to hop hop in and and see. Um, so I have no idea if you were planning on talking about design or um, programs or um, like uh, aesthetic or whatever it is that you were uh, looking to, to launch into. Okay. Um, how about Sharon? I know you can chat with us here. <laughs> I can talk. <laughs> oh, you can I, talk, um, darling. You can uh, a little bit, yes. Um, I have experience in Adobe and creating some things on uh, what is a silhouette design mm -hmm. studio. I know the very, very basics of Illustrator, but I have never like worked in Illustrator before. Mm -hmm. So what's like a sample project for you that you'd like to learn? Um, I guess create shapes uh, will be something um, I think interesting to learning and also how to do like if I was to do a keychain and I have let's say a font how to create this surrounding border for uh, oh, okay. to create an SVG. Okay perfect all right and how about you Moni um, I know you said you're new to all of it but what's something you'd like to try making on your own? Um, I've been making stuff with Silhouette um, Studio for quite a few years, and I can do a lot with fonts and putting them into shapes and whatnot. Um, so I, I've been doing stuff for years. I just always still feel like I've got a lot to learn. I can't draw yet. I like draw. I I need to learn how to do drawing things. I've made my own Christmas ornaments from scratch. If like designing from scratch, mm -hmm. um, I've made key tags where I've done the QR code on the back and the logo on the front with the uh, and then I put the the words in a circle around so it's not like I've not done anything but I still feel like I need everybody else's help to actually make stuff sure so what's a what's a sample thing that you would like to try to learn today um like it sounds like uh Sharon wants to do kind of a keychain um you know outline the text uh that sort of thing which we can do in multiple different things. We could do it as a keychain. We can do it as an ornament. We could do it as a sign. I'm pretty open to ideas. There's a lot that I've already figured out over the years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I got silhouette. I got my first silhouette when they were still brand new. Okay. Um, and then I've used my silhouette skills for um, t-shirts and heat transfer vinyl and you know, log uh, stickers and things like that. And then I just converted sure. that to Glowforge work. So it's, I'll take whatever you, whatever's on offer. <laughs> okay, so let me, um let me switch my screen here and we'll get into an illustrator. So can you guys all see it? Yes. All right. So usually when I start something new, you'll see that I do the Glowforge since um, pretty much every, you know, every laser that you look at is going to have the Glowforge size bed or larger um, with people working with it. So I like to just start out with the Glowforge bed size 
And then obviously whatever you're making is going to end up being smaller, but this kind of gives you that guideline of saying, look, this is the basic artboard that you're going to um, have everything constrained within. And I like to start with landscape. I don't know um, if everyone else, you know, everyone's got their preference. So a lot of people like to start with it like piece of paper. So it's taller. I like landscape because it gives me more space that I can actually um, spread out what I'm working with. So let's go to a new file. Bear with me. Windows decided it needed to update like 10 minutes before this. So <laughs> I'm still running on a fresh reboot. Okay, so um, one of the main things was text. So let's get in here. I don't think I have my suitcase. Oh, why does it do it? Um, I didn't launch my suitcase before this, but I saw a ton of fonts that are in here. So it's going to give you a basic um, Laura Mipson just to start with. This is a standard in um, print design, really. Um, it's placeholder text. And a lot of times that you use this, which you may run into on your projects, is if you plan to have text in a space, but you don't have the content for it, or you don't want people to actually get caught up in what the content is. So if you're doing something like a recipe card or a menu, you might use the full Lorem Ipsum, which uh, you can actually get at uh oh, some.com and uh it'll it'll generate paragraphs for you um and then that way it's text that's irregular but it's nothing so it'll give people an idea of what the text is going to look like in the layout but not necessarily get caught up in what the text is itself so let's see here. Um, since it's the holidays, let's try doing just a happy holidays. And let's make sure, let me see if I can move this here. There. I'll move your pretty faces to the side so I can see my layers. Um, and you guys can see, you probably could see it before anyway. Um, now I'm in the text formatting area. And so if you're doing something where you're putting it on an item, you're putting it into an ornament or anything else, then usually centered text is where you want to go. Um, if you do decide that you want to have left set, left aligned or right aligned, then that's something you can do um, later as your design develops, or a lot of times what I'll do is I'll end up actually breaking apart the two pieces of text, and then that way I can um, align them myself as I like. So in this one, let's do that. And that's actually kind of nice. If you hit the Alt key, you'll see that you get that double arrow, and that's just an easy clone of your layer as you drag it off somewhere. So I am going to delete that here. And oops, no, I don't want to extra text. If I move too fast for you guys, let me know too, because I'm used to doing this. You know, I worked with it for 26 years now. So um, <laughs> if I move fast, then let me know so I can slow it down and you can uh, actually see what I'm doing. Now here you can see it's not even left aligned and it's not centered aligned, but this is a kind of nice way to move your text up into each other. So you combine it with, um, you know, possibly some overlay depending on the font that we choose. Speaking of fonts, just basic in um, any of the fonts that you have loaded, if you have the text already there, it will use that as your display and it'll show you the text in the various fonts that you're rolling over. Another thing you can do is if you come to these filters right here, the funnel filter will actually let you narrow it down like a funnel into um, a different type of font. So let's say for example, you only want a script font then it now will only show you script fonts in this, oh, 
here like uh, in this dialogue so you've taken all of those blocks out you've taken all of those um de decorative fonts out and now it's all just script so that's helpful when you say you know what i'm doing a sign for a wedding i don't really want to mess with anything that looks like it came from a circus tent um us however we want to do the decorative because um actually i think we want no filter for this because i saw my other fonts go by decorative um is or ones with a you know highlighted capitals um almost illuminated text and some uh i don't know if you guys are familiar with illuminated text but that's the uh old uh like irish and um medieval scripts where they have the one letter that's extremely decorated and then the rest of the letters are plain and so we there's so much stuff that you can do with this i'm going to take the filter off because i've been doing holiday stuff lately i've got some nice ones at the top so we can say that one's nice holiday oh it's called holiday present so and you can see now that you do have some overlay here and like for example, the ornaments that I've been working on, I've actually had some overlap where I've used the font to push into the line above it. And so you can get over there and say, look, that looks great, but I need to change where that H is. So you just take the H out. And with that, I just did a um, control C to cut it. Or I'm sorry, control X to cut it. And then I'll make it its own piece of font over here that I could do something along the lines of that, where it makes an interesting shape with the H. Or, um, you know, I can change the size of it if I decide, you know what, I want to kind of block that in. You know, there's lots of stuff you can do. For now, I'm going to leave it at the same size that it was. Now, one of the things that is fun is let's say we're going to do a keychain. <clears throat> and so keychains start up pretty much usually rectangle, I think. So this is five inches seems a little bit long for a keychain, I think. What's a standard size for your keychains that you guys have made? Usually about three and a half to four inches, depending on names or whatever the phrase is. Okay, so let's go with three and a half. And so once you have a sh shape over here, excuse me, um, then you can just come up to this menu up here. And depending on whether or not you have it in this is um, chain means that it's going to change the size proportionately. And unchained means basically that you're going to chain one or the other, not both. So if we say, you know what, we want 3.5 by 1.5, then you can easily make it that way versus trying to drag it out yourself. Now our text is a little big for that, but we also have to add on the hole that's going to be made for this. So let's come up with a hole size. I'm thinking we probably want like, quarter inch full size, that seems right. And again, that's the same thing where I have it unchained in the shape. So, um, <clears throat> so I can just use it that way versus having to drag it out. And you can, if you watch, it'll tell you the shape size as you do that. It's just so much easier than eyeballing it to basically tell it to what size you want. So I think from this, we're going to say, let's make this a gift tag. And gift tags are generally mm, kind of this shape. So let's go to the center here. And let's swap this to a line. So basically, the way I like to work, especially if I know that it's going to be something that's um, matching on both sides, is I only work in half. So, and this, if I say, you know what, I want to, because we have a shape here, I can say, I want to round both of these corners. 
but not those because these are going to be part of this half that I then double, which we'll get to. <laughs> I know I'm jumping around here a little bit. Um, then selecting both of these, which it looks like I got some of the bombs in there. Yes. Watch your selection areas because it'll tell you when you have more than what you think. Um, are you guys familiar with these, these corner dots? Have you seen these before? Yes. No. I've actually never used uh, Illustrator before, so I'm I'm learning here. The principles are similar in what I use as Inkscape, but yes, this, oh, okay. this is good. Okay, great. Yeah, so this is a really nice tool. And what this allows you to do is you can round um, between two points or you can round corners. So um, once you see this dot show up, then that allows you to round by a certain amount. So you can round it all the way down until the actual points meet in the center. And then I'll show you that. Once it's red, it can't do anymore. Or you can choose, you know what, I just want this to be a soft round where you can see right there, that's a quarter of an inch rounding on it. And so that feels a bit more like a tab. And then we're gonna come back over here and um, we're gonna select this because I like the shape that I came up with. We're going to go up over here and you'll see the rotate tool and um, underneath the rotate tool. So you click and hold down. And this is the thing a lot of people don't, under don't know or don't understand is that they like to hide stuff behind other stuff. So like, for example, on the text tool, you can see that it has all of these options for text versus just typing out plain text or not, I'm sorry, not plain text, but a text line. So under this one, you have rotate or you have reflect. Excuse me, so reflect is nice because we have our shape here and it gives you the center of the shape right there. So if you say, you know what, I actually want to um, flip this on its center, you hold alt down to select your um, center point and click. And then it'll show you the options of how you can flip this. Now, we actually don't want to do that. What we're doing is we're going to flip it so we have the other half of the tab. So we're going to come down here to that point, which is our center point, hit Alt, and then <laughs> I'm not going vertical. We're going to go horizontal, which means that it's going to pull it down that way. And we copy because then that way we have two pieces. Now, obviously, I didn't make this in the right area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it down to the corner. And then what we can do is we can um, just connect these lines. So the two different arrows that you'll see used is the black arrow is a selection tool. Um, that's also using the V on the keyboard. And that's when you grab something, you'll grab the whole thing. Um, with the white selection, so they call it like direct selection versus selection, which I think is kind of confusing. So I call them V and A. So this is the A arrow, which is white, and the A arrow will let you do things like go in and select a point versus the whole piece. And so for this, what we're gonna do is select the two points that we wanna connect, and you actually, join them. So the quick key for that is control J and it'll finish your shape for you. Now this isn't fully a full shape because we haven't finished that line over here. We just connected this line. So you still have to keep that in mind. In fact, I'm going to switch this over so that you can see where our shapes are. This guy is going to go red. And I like to work in colors a lot, just to remind me of, of who has which lines, so I know where I need to join stuff. And so this guy now needs to be in the center of this. And this is a really uh, neat tool to make sure you use if you don't want to move things around, but you just want to center this within a shape, is you select both of them, you come over to the align section, and you want to align by vertical. So we're going to tell it to basically push it down to here. But we don't want it to move everything, as you'll see if I do it right now. 
oh, it moved it out of space right there, and that's not what we want. So control Z. Basically, what we want to do is we want to select a key object. And the key object for this, you can see it's already highlighted with a heavy blue line. If I select that one, that gets the heavy blue. So we want this, since it's the larger piece, to get the heavy blue line. That shows that it's the object that you're going to be doing any um, alignment within. And then now we select a line and it moves the dot down to us into that center line that you can see. And yeah, this is all kind of like, <laughs> I never know what uh, what someone will take away from this. So it's always like, for me, I'm not sure which, uh, which parts are good for you, but just uh, ask questions as we go too. So now here, the same thing that I showed you when we came over to these corners, this is a little sharp, especially for a keychain. So we're gonna pull that in some and just soften that up. Now a keychain, this is kind of a distance um, for what you would have for a chain or a jump ring. So I'm gonna pull that just a little bit closer. I'm assuming we're using um, quarter inch uh, acrylic for this. So that should still be thick enough that it's not going to break, but it'll be close enough that um, it won't need extra work or extra hardware to get through it. So I'm also going to come in here and remove this line. This is one of the things that's interesting is you have a shape and you say, you know what, that's great, but I want to join these two shapes and I don't want to have to mess with it too much is you just go in there and say, I don't like that line. You select it with the A arrow, the white arrow, and delete. And it's like it was never there. <laughs> of course, I've got to get back to the, the type at some point. It's bugging me. Uh, let me lock this. So this is one thing that you guys can do uh, if you're working on something and it keeps getting in your way. You can either move it up out of the way, which I'll do a lot, because if you look right now, we've got all this space to work in. And so a lot of times I'll even make various uh, versions that I can then work with on it. Or you'll see, let's, we'll do a couple different sayings on the uh, text. So I can just move that up and out of the way. And then I'm free to work with this some more without having to bother with selecting it. So now we have these two points. We've got red and black and we're gonna join those. So command J and you can see the line changed color. So usually it'll take on one or the other colors to show you that it's joined. This one's still not though, so you want to make sure you go over and do that one as well before you forget. So now we have our key, like, um, I'm sorry, not keychain, um, gift tag. Um, gift tag, gift tag keychain. <laughs> so um, I'm thinking, does this look a little narrow or do I just have really big type? What do you guys think? I think it looks great. Okay, you're just saying that. Um, <laughs> okay, we're gonna pull this type back down and we're gonna resize it a bit because you can see it's pretty large for this. Now, here's just a basic one. So now this is almost ready for you to take and say, that's it, that's a great uh, keychain. You've got to go into your type and with this, uh, I'll just select the whole thing and then deselect that tag. And I can say, okay, everything looks good. This is going to be an engrave. So I'm going to go up to type and create outlines. That's going to give me shapes instead of live type. And if there's anything that overlaps, then what I want to do is come back over here to Pathfinder and I unite everything. And you can see some of the areas actually showed up where you can see the points uh, reduced. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but there's a lot of points on this type, um, which generally you don't need and you don't want because especially when you're working with Glowforge, all of these points need to be taken in when it's importing a file. 
the more you have overall, this, for example, is one small little piece. So this has probably, you know, 1,500, 2,000 points. But as you get into bigger and bigger projects, if you do have stuff like this, it adds up exponentially, basically. So pretty soon you'll get that error that Glowforge gives you saying it can't import your file. And I think they don't even tell you why. <laughs> they just say they can't do it. So one of the things I like to do is if you come back up to object and you'll be using this area a lot is object path. And so that's what we're running to affect is the path. And you can see it's simplify. Simplify then says, oh, we don't need all those points from here to there. And you can see it's reduced it now. It'll actually tell you it reduced it from 786 to 215. Just with that simple little pass didn't affect the look at all. And then you can say, okay, this is going to be, this is what I like to do for my colors. I like to do a red cut line. So red and here, if you decide, you know what, I know I've already got this uh, marked out. I don't want to have to go back up here and select red again. You can actually do control I. Oops. I'm, do. I'm sorry, it's just I. It's I for eyedropper. And you have to have it selected. <laughs> and once you hit I, then you select it and it'll put everything about that path onto your shape. So if you had a thick stroke, it would change the stroke to be thick. If you had, um, you know, a fill, it would change that. It would add everything to it. So a little bit of power there. Don't let it go to your head. And then on this, um, what I like to do for fills that are going to be engraved is I like to turn them purple or uh, fuchsia rather, because this then lets me know at a glance when I look at a file, I can say, oh, okay, that's a cut line for a keychain with an engrave on it. And yes, if you're going to do an engrave where you want it reversed, then this is actually um, a fun trick then you can go back over here to your flip and say, okay, I want to do this, but also have an, a reverse of it. Hit Alt as your center. And then now it'll flip it for you that way. And you're done. So that could be a gift tag um, or a keychain gift, you know, a gift tag keychain, something along those lines. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to take that tag again. So we're going to select both the red lines. I'm going to hit Alt to copy them and bring them back down. And I think uh, Sharon said she wanted to do something with an outline stroke around the words. So let's try the same thing. Let's do Happy Holidays. And I'm going to copy that back down again. I'm going to resize it for the size of this now. All we're using the red is as a guideline on this time. That's not true. We'll probably keep this front end with the tag. We'll see how it looks. So now you can say my text is almost as big as I want it. You want to leave a little bit of room since we're going to outline it. So now um, we're going to go back up to object, path. Oops, I'm sorry, I'm skipping ahead. You want to go to type, create outlines, unite. Oh my goodness, it's a cute cat. What's his name? This is Peppermint and she loves being a little stinker. Oh, so cute. Thank you. I may have a cat visit. My Siamese likes to come and drink from my uh, ice water, but I, I uh, already switched to juice. So I think you guys have missed her for the day. Um, well, you're gonna have to put your put your water up on your desk next time. Oh my goodness. she They come and get water before I'm even up out of bed. It's nuts. My husband uh, sets up, I've got water my pills, my protein bar, like everything for the morning. And they come and they actually just sit right in front of me, like right here. 
and just drink my water because I my cat it. comes and puts presents in my coffee. Oh, oh, like uh, <laughs> a, a Christmas bow and a hair tie are two of the memorable ones. Uh, well, that's not bad. I mean, if it was like a cat treat, then that yeah. would be kind of not very tasty. <laughs> yeah. She put nine hair ties in the garbage disposal before I figured that out. <laughs> like all at once, I found them all at the same time. Okay, so I just simplified this one again. Um, and then we're gonna do the outline stroke. And I think that's for Sharon. Um, so object, basically, again, we're gonna come back down the path and you can see here, there's offset path or outline stroke. I just did, um, I didn't do outline stroke, I'm sorry. We'll get to that because that's actually um, a useful tool. This is offset path. So basically offset path is the one that gives you all of the shape around um, what you're selected. So you can see right here, right now I've got 0.138, which is between, I think that's like four millimeter. That's between um, one eighth and it's uh, and one quarter. So we can go back and say, okay, I wanna do actually one eighth, which is one, two, five, and see what that looks like, um, which is still pretty heavy. And what I actually like to do is I like to work in point sizes. So this is the really cool thing is instead of having to type in what the inches are for your point sizes or um, you know the inches are for any of the other type of standard sizing that you can do, you can just type it straight in as that. So if I say I actually want something that is a five point offset, I just type in five point and it does the math for me. So that's very useful. Now the minor on this is whether or not you have a sharp shape or if you have a round. And if you notice, you can see a sharp corner there, sharp here, sharp there. And you may not necessarily want that. So like for Happy Holidays, you probably want it to be more round and fuzzy. So you just change that to round and you can see it's taken all of the sharpness off. It's rounded all of those uh, corners for you. So that's always nice too. Now you can see this is the shape it's it's made from all the very various pieces we have. You're just going for an outline of the whole thing. So we're going to unite again. And this gives us our great outline. And we're going to swap it to a stroke. And I, like I said, I like to change colors just to keep up with what we're doing. So now you can see this is your stroke around all the letters. And in Sorry, some cases, okay, showing again, how did you convert it to a stroke? I missed that. I blinked. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry. Which part? How do you convert it um to the stroke? It was oh. just a bit before this. Yes, yes. So I'll just go back. When I went from here to yes, mm -hmm. right. yeah. So right here, you'll see there's a fill. Right. In this square, there's a stroke in this one. Okay. So yeah. when you select it, it'll say, oh, look, you've got a fill item. So mm -hmm. you can use this little uh, rounded arrow and it will swap for you. Okay, perfect. So you just click and it's done. Awesome. Thank you. And then um, I went ahead and changed color so that it was easier to uh, pay attention to the progress that we're doing. Um, and then in this, you can see now you've got these little pieces that you probably don't want to have to mess with. I'm trying to cut this out. So I usually, you can see the path lines there. Because this groups itself when you're working with it, um, you can see everything is selected when you selected this little bit with your black arrow. This is the V arrow or the selection tool. So what I like to do, because it's easier, is I will switch to the white arrow with A, and then I'll click off, so I'm not selecting anything, and I'll just select the line. 
And the nice thing about that is the A arrow, the white arrow will go in inside any groups that you have and it'll let you pull out these little pieces. You can pull out big pieces too, but it'll let you edit this without having to dig down into the layers of how grouped something is. So say you get a file from someone and you're not even sure what they've done as far as like grouping, you don't wanna ungroup everything, then you can start doing a lot of editing just with the white arrow and going in and selecting pieces and um, editing them. So in this case, we're gonna delete it. And then I'll show you the difference if we use the black arrow, then you'll see, oops, we select everything, everything there. So then what I generally do is I don't bother with like trying to sift through the groups and the menus. I just double click it. And then you see if it selects by itself. So every double click that you're doing, you go down into the layers of a group, if that makes sense. So think about it like it's the onion, you know, there we took off one slice. Okay, still need to keep going. It's not on that one. We double click again. And then now you can see everything's kind of grayed out, but we can select that piece. Nothing else is selected. And then we can delete. But that was three times the work of just using the white arrow. So that's why I like to say, you know, you're going to you work a little bit faster um, and you'll find out what your workflow is. The other thing I don't like is, um, for example, you'll see lines like this, and this will show you where people don't take the time to think about what um, the actual use of their file is. Um, because if you have this cut up and in, all you're going to do is get some melted acrylic. It's not going to look good. It'll probably brown um, and it's unnecessary. Excuse me, I have a dry throat. So what I like to do is go in, I'll get close here. And if you select it with the white arrow, you'll see all of the points that are along this path. Now, right here is where it gets a little bit tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a point over here and then we're gonna delete these and then basically remove that whole section so that we don't have to worry about it. So if you want to add a point, then you can go under the pen tool and you can add, there's also delete, there's also the um, anchor point tool, which will allow you to change the bending and the, um, the direction that the pads are going to go from your anchor point. But what we wanna do is just add. And the nice thing about this is you can just say plus or minus, you'll see it change to a minus. So what we're gonna do, I'll show you is plus, and we're gonna add right there. And then we're gonna switch to minus and we're gonna remove right there. So if we zoom out, then that's gotten a little bit better for our use. Now you could do the same thing if you came across to here, just have the center area versus having this actually collect um, or sorry, collect, instead of having this uh, be a connection and then have to cut the whole thing out here. So what I'll do is the same thing. As I come back in, I see one that matches right there. We're gonna take out this other, like a section of it right here. So I've added those points. I'm gonna switch back to my white arrow tool and I'm gonna select the two lines in between the points. I don't think I've gotten to this yet, have I? I'm actually doing a line removal. I don't think so. Yeah, so it's the same thing as working with the anchor points. So you can do it by line and then you can change the line however you like. So in this case, I'm gonna select the lines. I'm going to just hit delete, delete the lines. And then we're gonna come back in and we've already learned join. So we're going to join these as their own shape inside. And we're going to join these as their own shape outside. So now we have that nice solid line that goes around without digging in too much. And I could spend a lot of time doing it like here on the Y I could do it on both of them. Um, but what I want to get to for Sharon is making the tag out of this. So in this case, 
you could say, all right, um, this is, I'm going to select it all, all the content inside. This is a little bit smaller than the tag that we made before. So we're going to resize it. So it's just going up to the arrow key up there and pulling it. Now you can either constrain it with shift. And as you go up, it'll lock at the lower left corner, but it'll keep everything else in proportion. Or if it's in the center like this, if you hold Alt and Shift together, then it actually does it from the center of the art. So now you can say, okay, I can see that that's tight down here. That's close up there. That's pretty much the size I want. So I'm going to move it into position. And there, that looks pretty good. So now you have two choices. You can either pull this in so that the tag is where you want it, which might be like, okay, we're going to have the tag connect um, oops, on the sides right there with the piece. And then we'll come down and edit that. I'll show you again. And we don't need the rest of the tag. So same thing with the white arrow, delete with the white arrow, delete, and delete. So now this is keeping our hole for the keychain and the space for the um, the jump ring or D ring or whatever uh, hardware you guys are using in the same space as the previous one. And it's the same overall space or shape rather of the previous keychain. So these will stack well too, if you're taking them to a show or taking them anywhere else where you want to be able to just throw them into a box and not have to worry about it. You don't have multiple like thicknesses and uh, lengths and, you know, widths or any of that. It's just easy to stack them and, you know, keep it modular. So here now we're going to come back to this and say, this looks pretty good. And we're probably going to want to start from about here to, <laughs> I'm pointing at my screen like you guys can see it. Um, you will probably want to start around here in this line to carry it across to here. One of the things you can do is pull a guide down. If you do, it's from the measurement here. So that uh, um, ruler, I guess you can call it, is where you grab and pull and your guide can pull down. And same thing, you can do a guide from this side as well. Um, we don't really need the vertical guide right now, so I'm gonna hit undo. So control Z. And then right now we're gonna come in here and we're going to add a point. So that's the plus sign. And then we're gonna come in with the minus point right here and trim that down a little bit. What this is going to do for us now, if we look at it, you can see that it's going to connect over here pretty nicely. So I'm going to go back to my pen tool. And you can just draw with the pen tool too. In fact, I'm going to do a whole session that talks about using the pen tool because I think a lot of people aren't really aware of how much you can do with it. But right now, what we're going to do is extend this line. So there you can see the line is um, changed. It went from that star to the line, which means you're connecting to it and you're now going to become part of that line. I like to hold shift when I'm doing straight lines to constrain it that way. And you'll see we came right, right there. So it wants to keep going. You can either hit uh, P again the pen tool and it'll unlock it or if you're going to switch gears and go back to your arrow then you can hit v or a or whichever one you want to go to so now let's look at the bottom and and i tend to just zoom around a lot um i just realized that <laughs> you guys don't know what the keys are so for zoom out in illustrator it's control spacebar you can see that it turns into a plus and then alt on a pc if you do control space well spacebar alt then click 
it will just zoom you out in um, various uh, distances. So, but if you want to get in and out very quickly, what I tend to do is like, for example, control space bar is plus, and I know I want to get into this area right here, is I take that and I actually just drag it a little and then zoom into that spot. So that can save you some time when you're looking at stuff and you just want to be able to either zoom in, you want to zoom out and see how it looks, zoom back in to see what you're going to do next. So that'll be something fun to play with. Um, here, we want to cut this red line again. So I'm going to add in another point and we are going to trim these guys down there. So now that means that basically we're going to take away this interior line since this is going to be the start of the tag. And you don't have to, you know, if you're making a keychain, one of the things you can do is instead you can um, take the, the circle, say you want to just have it from there. Here, I'll do this in a different color so you can see it's an alternate. Um, and then just uh, offset that. So if you do an offset path, offset path there, that's 0 0.07. Um, generally, I want to say, I actually have a, let me see if I have it up there. Oh, I've got the window up, and so it won't let me look. I've got a thing that shows me what my standard offset is. <clears throat> for this, I'd probably go a little bit further. And so with this, you might do like a 0.9. No? 0.9. Oh, wow. No. <laughs> Zero 0.09. Um, just to give it a little bit more thickness like we have right there. I think that's roughly around the same amount. And then you can use that in itself instead of using the tag front if you just merge that into everything so you have options and um you're not stuck with any of it you can put the um the hanging hole off of a different part if you wanted to have it on the end over here um if we want to add a present to it any of those things so i'm going to delete those for now since we're focusing on this and we're going to come in here we're going to select you can see all of the bits, I didn't select that, I used the A tool, and we have our point there, and it has a point here that's going to lock this position. So once we remove this curve, then we'll have a spot to actually link up our lines. So we're going to remove the blue curve all the way down, and this is actually kind of a fun trick. Well, fun. I mean, <laughs> I guess as fun as it can be when you're when you're doing this work all day. Um, you can see we have either here or here as our lock for this shape right here, and carrying to the red. So we're going to delete, and then this is the nice part is that we have this whole line that you can see the whole thing is selected now. If you select it with the white arrow then you'll select the whole thing. I mean, you can select it with a black arrow if you wanted to, but we're still gonna be working with the white arrow as we go to the other stuff. So select it, just the end points with the white arrow, hit delete, and then delete again, and it'll take everything out for you. So let's come back up to the top. We're just gonna connect these and let them curve up a little like that. And I like to drag too, depending on what I'm doing. So if you like to drag, that's just spacebar. And that'll actually help you in a lot of stuff if you're just carrying on a line. Like if I said, okay, I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna check everything as we go along this, which I have, and I've done it for really large files too. So um, it, it, you get to used to what works for you. So here, I'm gonna remove that. I'm going to connect these. And you can soften that if you want. And just say, you know, I don't want any sharp edges. 
and it'll even do a curve like that for you. So then this is basically saying you have a red cut line, you have a blue secondary cut line, and we can go back in here, double click to get all the black fill. And you can see it's in a bunch of different pieces. And the black fill then is going to be pink. So it matches what the rules are for the first one, which is red cut, blue secondary cut, pink is in gray. Right? It, we have like five minutes left. Did you guys want anything specific? Or do you want to see me just work on something? I, th I think this has been very helpful <clears throat> for me. I, I, the, the biggest thing I struggle with is fonts. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think to me, for some reason, fonts are just so subjective. Uh, people will say they like the font, they don't like the font. Yes. And, and then I look at it and I'm overwhelmed with choices. And then, <laughs> and then I have no idea what's appealing really. So it's, it's hard. Um, so that, that side of my brain doesn't work so well. Well, you get used to it. And um, oftentimes, you know, a lot of it is experience. And oftentimes you can categorize it where script is more fun um, and uh, home style stuff. Um, sans serif is usually business. Um, sans serif, you can also keep in the back as this is a um a, an area of type that's not going to draw any attention to itself so if, like before when i was talking about the decorative uh capital letters have a really decorative capital and then sans serif after it and it'll be um you know more of a combo that'll appeal to people because otherwise you just get fancy 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 and that's just too much fancy for one word does that make sense yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> it, well, it makes sense when you describe it, but then when I put it into practice, it's a little, <laughs> it, it it takes some extra work or effort on my oh, part. Oh, sure. But like, for example, what would you select fonts for? Um, ooh, well, if I was, if I was um, coming up with a design and then I just wanted to put, let's say some like Christmas greeting on it, Mm -hmm. uh, just at, to show an example of an area engraved, mm -hmm. I, I might spend, you know, I don't know, 30 minutes coming up with a design, but then spend another like half hour trying to figure out what, what fonts <laughs> work for that space that I have. But okay. Yeah. Well, that's just... some, yeah. I was going to say that's something I can easily go through. Um, here, let me. And I, I was just going to point out, uh, there's a website that is called word mark dot it it mm -hmm. and if you type a phrase let's say it will show you all the fonts that you have on your computer so you can see that phrase in mm. all the different fonts that you have on your computer oh nice yeah one of the things i have as far as font management is i have um fusion suitcase um it used to be extensus and hmm. it will allow you to have thousands of fonts, so then you can select which ones are activated. Things like hmm. that site will only do what's activated on your machine. Um, yeah. Whereas when you hunt through um, with a font management program, then it'll actually look at every font you have and allow you to choose whether or not it's active on the system. If you activate thousands of fonts, it's going to bog your system down like nobody's business. Mm -hmm. That being said, I have way too many fonts active right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, let's go to fonts here and let's pick Seasons Greetings since that's what we had talked about. So there's Seasons. And let's make Greetings. Okay, so now in this case, this is a Christmas font. So you can easily look at it and say, oh yeah, that'd be pretty. I mean, it's the one we've been working with so far. That'd be pretty if you just used it together for, it kind of has an old timey um, 
Christmas feel to it. Let's take that aside for a second. So we say, okay, that's interesting. We like that. Uh, I'm gonna come down here actually. So now we're gonna copy this and say, what's the next one? And usually what I do is I give myself six to eight. So if I look at this and I say, okay, the other fonts that I have on here, and this is where it gives you that uh, preview, which is very helpful because you can look through it and say, okay, um, you know, I kind of like when you come down to something like that, little sans serif, but still pretty, co pretty cozy. Okay, now we're going to look and say, and this is just the A's. I've got so many. Let me scroll down some. There's Harrington. Somebody ripped it off. Where to go? There. That's one that a lot of people like. So much so that it's been stolen by I don't even know how many font houses. Okay, there it is. Let's go down further. I'm gonna say that's too close to the other one we looked at. Oh, here we go. That's kind of a mix between, this is actually one that I think is supposed to be done for like Westerns, but it's kind of got that nice look for um, season's greetings. Um, yeah, that, that looks like it, you could see that on a gift card. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so here's another one that's more of the kind of a German feel to it. Oh, we're getting on to six. So now let's see here. And I'm just scrolling through this whole list of fonts to see what catches my fancy. So, you know, if you have a lot, then, um, then it might take you a while. Like I'm only in the C's right now. Um, let's see. Let's see if we can go down a bit. Yeah, oh, maybe maybe a, a thin, lot. wispy one. Okay, so let's look here. Um, well, there's something like that. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, uh, like a, a scripty or, style. Scripty? Oh, okay. Let's just narrow it down the guy's the scripts then. And unfortunately, that one you have to take it off. So that's not bad as far as the script goes. It's not very decorative though. All right, so here's seven. We're getting there. Oh, you know what? There's one of these. I'm gonna say it's a sign. Yeah, I think what I what I often find myself asking myself is if I were to cut this font and then try to photograph it, mm -hmm. would it be legible in like a photograph from you know near or far? And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and that's that's uh, a good thing to think about. However, it's not necessarily valid for every item. Because if you do have something that's like a gift tag or a small box, then it's going to be different than if you have something that's like a big plaque, which you can always see from across the room. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to stop and think about like what you're taking photos of. And then um, usually with anything that's uh, engraved, I like to take an angle shot. So not direct on, or you will have one that's direct on, but you do an angle shot across the wood with the engraved so that then you can see both um, the wood grain itself and then that nice dark color that you've got going in. And um, with the nice thing about engraves is that you can do stuff like uh, this font over here, which is like you said, a little wispier. So um, one of the key things with this, uh, let's see, let's pull, well, let's pull that one since uh, you like that. Let's... Okay, so we are going to drag this guy up here. And this is often what I'll do. 
because I'll come up with, you know, a variety of fonts. So I just leave them over there and then I come up here and start to work with it. Um, with this, season's greetings, unless you make a new apostrophe, I would say that this is going to get lost. So for now, I'm going to take it out um, so that we get the join between the letters and then we can add it back in later just as its own graphic. So with this, you can say, okay, everything looks pretty good. Um, one of the things with script fonts is um, they always have this care, well, you can't ever say always, but they have this carry line, <clears throat> excuse me, that goes through from one letter to the other. And sometimes for being able to read something, you wanna increase that space. So um, in a font, if you are thinking that you want less space in between the letters or more space in between, then you put your cursor inside there and you hold Alt and then you use left arrow or right arrow and it kerns it for you. So you can look and see there, if I go too far, then that breaks that carryover. But for right now, let's say we wanna to go to the, the very stretch of the carryover and that's right there. And so you can do it one by one and say, you know, this is now what kind of feels good to me. Um, in some cases like this R, for example, I'll probably go in and draw in a new line that will actually connect those two because I think that the R is more legible that way. So if I just zoom in, get the pen tool and say, okay, we're gonna start from about there and we're going to just carry that R curve, which of course you want to make sure it's on the line, then you can. And if you say, you know, that's a little too awkward. Oops, it's a little too awkward. So I wanna move that curve just a little bit. You grab the anchor tool, you move it. You can say, okay, that's more in line with the actual curve that it has. So I'm gonna change these handles on the point, which you can see it changes the curve of what you're uh, working with. And then you can just change it to something that looks a little more natural like that. And if you look at that, you would say, that's the way the font came. I can't see any difference that would tell me that this isn't the font itself. Another thing you can do is you can come up here and say, you know what, I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna carry it over for the E on here so that we have the same kind of a connector. And you probably wanna trim it a little bit depending on how you get it going. But right there, just do kind of a rotate on it and there, now you have it connect there. So whenever you have anything, especially for other fonts that you're using when you're making keychains or anything where you want them connected, you can go in and just easily with the pen tool, connect them yourself. Now, one of the things that I like to do, and I'm gonna actually take this out because this is gonna um, warp the text, is I like to go to effect, warp, and you can see these arc, lower arc, upper arch, bulge, flag, wave. These are all shapes that you can have it actually do for you on this. And you can see this is arc lower. So it'll show you the shape right here. It's a flat top with a curved bottom. So everything here curves down, if you notice. And you can actually affect it. You can say, you know what? I want it to curve even more. I wanted to curve less. And this is going the other way, but they actually have a setting for that. So we're gonna to go to our upper. And usually they start at about 50. So you can see with the S, that's not great. Um, but this is actually something that works really well with other fonts like this guy. So let's copy this guy up just for grins, just so you guys can see this as an example. 
because this is great for um, Christmas stuff. So we're going to go back to effect, warp, arc, upper. There. And so now you can see this is really similar to a lot of those signs you see, right? We're going to pull it out a little, make it fit over the greetings better. And probably go back in on this and size the greetings down. And now all of a sudden that has a different feel to it than just having that plain type. So be sure to play around with stuff like that. Um, you can get different feels for stuff easily. Okay, so going back to this guy, <clears throat> if we're going to engrave it, then you just want to make sure everything's thick enough for what you're doing. In this case, I added that line. Um, oops. And what we'll do is we'll go through and convert the type create outlines, connect. We're going to select this little piece. That's going to go object, path, outline stroke, connect the whole thing, unite again. And then now let's look and see effect, more arc upper. And still get that crazy S going on. So let's look at some of the others. Uh, let's try the flag. Mm, that's not bad. Might be a little much. Let's see if we take it the other way. Oops, no. <laughs> I don't think the flag is for us. Um, let's go to a wave there. Okay. That's not bad. So you can see our original line, which is actually what it's gonna stay at until you finish it. And um, once you're done and you say, yes, this is the way I like the type to look, you come back up to type and you're actually going to, oh, is it type? No, sorry. It's object expand appearance. And then that'll make it there for you in that shape. So you're basically locking it in. And then same thing, object, path, simplify to get rid of all of those extra points. You can take a look at it, tell it yes, and I'm done. And then there. So that's something that might be a little more interesting than just that one over here. That's where we started, that's where we went. Um, and you can add a little something in there. So like, for example, if you want to put Holly, um, let me sneak over to one of my other files here. And you guys can actually see one of my working files. Okay, so this is my current ornaments that I'm doing. You can see I've got stuff over here. So like here's, that's actually upside down. Here's a star. So I'll go over and steal stuff from other things. And I'm gonna turn it upside down. There, that's right side up. And so you can add it over here if you wanted to, make it feel a little bit um, atomic age. So it's the Christmas star, but it's also got kind of a mid-century modern feel. And then you do the same thing here where instead of fill, you'd stroke it. This is a nice, you know, thick stroke compared to this. So I would go from one to probably three if we do cut it out. And you probably angle it a little bit to match with this. Or not, we could also pull it up over here. What do you think? Should we bring it up or have it down on the left? I think the first way you had it is looks pretty good. Right here on the left. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll pull it up a little bit. And the nice thing about this is that this font is readable without all of this S part. So we're gonna do the same thing that I talked about earlier where you look at it, you say, okay, I can see the path right there. I'm going to add in a couple of 
points. There's a point right there I don't already have, so I don't need another one. There's another point. Okay, so go back in, delete, bring that guy, delete. And right now it's trying to finish the path. So it's looking at it saying, this is open and this is open. So I kind of see something should be doing here. And your answer is no, actually what you're doing is not what I want at all. What I'm going to do is come and collect these two. Join. And then you can see that went away because now these are the only um, open points left. If they're the only open points, then usually you can cheat and you can do join again. Um, sometimes, yeah, like it hassles you. I think you, there, you can do it that way with the black arrow. So you see it actually joined the open points that were there. So if you know that that's all you have left, you can kind of do a shortcut with that. So here, now you've got a shape like that. Um, it still feels a little thick to me. Should we take it down? Let's take it down. One. Since this is an engrave, then you can also say, you know what, I think what I want to do is add some decor inside this. So we'll come back to our pen tool. We'll just take a point here and here. You can see it's not in the center. The angle it a little. And then this is actually really cool. Um, <laughs> I can keep up this all day, you guys have probably noticed. So here we go to the rotate tool and we have the piece, but we have eight points on this star. So we're gonna go to the center of the piece and hit Alt to the center. And then we're gonna rotate. And generally, I wanna say it's 45 degrees. Is that right? Yes. So you say copy. And now you've got two. And then now, since you know that it's doing the 45 degrees like you want, and you've got two more to go, you hit Control D for duplicate, and your star is done. And it makes it so much easier that way. And I think we'll shape this in a little. And then here's another trick for you guys. Um, if you want more than just a line on your stroke, then come up to stroke right here in this window and you'll see that it has profiles. Under profiles, you can choose different profiles that it'll actually map to it instead of a straight line. So here, if I do that, then it's a fat end on one side of the line, sharp end on the other. And you can see we don't really want that because we're kind of cheating with how we have the lines right here. So what I'm gonna do is do a fat point on both sides. So you can see that, that, and the two inches that we had. And that looks a little bit nicer to have something in the center right there. And you can keep going on with this. I mean, like I said, you could add a ribbon right here. You could even just add a line um, with pen tool where you come from here, you come down and curve, go up, and you don't really even have to know how to draw to use a pen tool. That's the nice thing about it. You can just do that. Uh, it always tries to fill for me, I don't know why. And then you come back in with your white arrow, select it on that point. You say, there, that feels a little more natural. That feels a little more natural. This guy's got to change its curve a little there. So that's a nice curve with just a few points. And then you take that, you get your stroke. I think we did two points for that one and do the same thing, come back in here and say, okay, what do I want? Do I want fat to fat? Probably not. That doesn't do a ton for us in this. I mean, it does. You can see it now has this really elegant feel to it. Um, let's try fat to thin. Yeah. That's kind of nice because you get a little bit more there. So it almost feels like a calligraphic line that you've added. So there. So that's what we get from 
that text, oops, that text and about 10 minutes. So like I said, you guys can do this. It's just a matter of getting used to it and looking at it and what feels good to you. Because when you're using the pen tool, you know, as you get used to it, especially, and like I said, I'm gonna do more about the pen tool because I think it's underused. As you get used to working with stuff, then you're going to get better and better at really forming what it is that you have in your head. That's the key thing is you're just getting it out of your head and onto the paper or digital paper in this in this standpoint. So, and I went over by 20 minutes. I'm sorry, guys. But um, I hope you enjoyed everything. Did you have any uh, questions on the way out or comments or anything? Well, I well this I'm was... I'm going to need to get Illustrator. I'm sorry, what? I'm going to need to get Illustrator. I love Silhouette Studio, but you've got some functions that I don't have. Same yeah, I, here. <laughs> I think Illustrator's got some new tool that's free too, that I'm not sure if it includes Illustrator. But yeah, I, I've worked with Illustrator for so long because it was the professional, you know, tool back in the day. And um, it's just been one of those things that, you know, as you get used to it and get, get the new tools under your belt, then, you know, it's not going away. Adobe's too big a company and they have so many free uh, tutorials and just support and um, knowledge base, you know, forums, everything. So if you have questions, you can ask other people or, you know, you can watch a video on it and they do it all for free because they want you to use their product. What were you saying, Josh? No, I was just saying that this was extremely helpful. Thank you for sharing your design time with us. Oh, great. Yeah. No Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah. And I'm, uh, hopefully I'm going to be able to do this again next week. So, um, we'll see if we get more people just with the fact that I'm going to post this video up online for other people to see, but yeah, um, especially with the holidays and stuff coming up, like I said, you know, just being able to take a few steps to go from one thing to another and really zhuzh it up, I think people will be excited about and you know think about it for next time think about something specific because like you see i'm willing to just go ahead and make something out of nothing for you guys too thank you so very much for doing this this is really awesome yes thank you're welcome you. <clears throat> you're welcome and hopefully i'll see you back next week all right thank you thank so you. much all right thanks guys thank you have an awesome day yeah everybody <laughs>